Imagine if you had the magic power to make developing games faster and easier. Well, you do, and it's called AI. In this video, I'm diving into the best AI tools you need to know about and why embracing AI isn't just good for your games, but good for humanity as a whole. Let's get started. Usually when it comes to game dev, there are two types of people, those who are creative and good at art and the programmers. But regardless of what you're good at, having AI write code for you can save you a lot of time if you do it right. Currently, the most popular AI tool for coding is ChatGPT. You can simply ask it to make a Unity c -sharp script that makes a 2D character jump, and it will do it for you. It does have its limitations though, so you can't ask it to generate all the code required to make an MMORPG and expect it to do everything for you. What I just showed was actually not the best way of using ChatGPT to code. Instead of having ChatGPT do all the work for you, you should instead work together, collaboratively. Let's take a step back for a second. Do you remember the intro for this video? Well, it was written collaboratively with ChatGPT. I told it what the video was going to be about, and then it gave me an idea. Instead of just using what it gave me, we had a little back and forth to make it better. That's what should happen when you're coding. Sometimes a long back and forth is not the most productive thing, and it would be easier to simply modify the code yourself. Another tip for coding with ChatGPT is to have it give you code that doesn't rely on the engine you're using. For example, if I have a gun that has condition, ammo count, and damage, I could group all that stuff into a separate class so it isn't associated with any input handling or particle effects. So let's ask ChatGPT. I have a gun for a video game I'm making, and I was wondering if you could code the gun class for me. The gun will have ammo count, a condition, a base damage value, and a damage dealt value which is a function of the condition of the gun. The class should have a public shoot method which decreases the ammo count and lowers the gun condition. The shoot function will be called externally from a script that I already have that handles input. Because I never specified that I didn't want a Unity specific class and I had ChatGPT do stuff for Unity earlier, it assumed I wanted this as a mono behavior. Instead of blindly copy and pasting, I had ChatGPT change it. I read through this new class and realized that the damage dealt had a linear relationship with condition, where I wanted diminishing returns. After pointing this out and explaining a bit more of what I wanted, ChatGPT did its thing and everything was perfect. All I had to do here was think about what I wanted, ask ChatGPT, and then work with it a bit to make everything perfect. I even forgot to tell ChatGPT that the gun shouldn't shoot when it's out of bullets or when it's below zero condition. But it did it anyways, because it already has some base level awareness of how guns work. By separating the gun's ammo, damage, and condition from all the other stuff like input, hit scanning, and visual effects, our code is a lot cleaner and easier to maintain. If I had used the first mono behavior script that ChatGPT gave me, everything would technically still work. I would, however, have to Frankenstein together a bunch of different ChatGPT generated scripts, which is definitely a recipe for disaster. You most certainly still need to know how to program because AI isn't going to fully replace programmers, just allow them to be incredibly more efficient. Another really good use of AI for coding is debugging. Sometimes you just have no clue what's going on, and after copying and pasting your code into ChatGPT, it can shed some light on a silly mistake you may have made. Be wary though, because sometimes the problem is with a setting in your game engine and not specifically with your code. You can also have AI code a pre-existing algorithm for you. Like, for example, say we have a tic-tac-toe game where we need an opponent AI. We could tell ChatGPT that the board is an array of length 9, with 1s representing Xs and a negative 1 representing an O. Zeros will also represent empty space. Then we can ask it to write us a function that tells us what the best move is to make using the minimax algorithm. For complex algorithms, having ChatGPT code it for you can be a huge time saver. Again, this isn't a copy and paste thing, this is using ChatGPT to help you program something you could have done yourself just a lot faster. Okay, that was a lot, but coding is a big part of game development and any way to speed up the process is worth it. Before we move on, I just want to mention a tool I found while doing research for this video called Perplexity. It's kind of like ChatGPT, but a browser extension and in one click can summarize websites. This is good for getting a quick synopsis of a long website that may or may not answer the question you have, saving you time. Just like how AI can make you a more efficient coder, it can also make you a better artist. Now, full disclosure, I am a much better programmer than artist, but I'm okay at pixel art, 3D modeling, and vector art. One of the most popular AI art generators is Dolly, and that's what I'll be using here. To access Dolly, you can pay for a ChatGPT Plus plan. This will also get you access to a better version of ChatGPT too. Or you can use Copilot for free. Copilot, 
formerly known as Bing AI, can be freely accessed by doing something I can almost guarantee you've never done before. Voluntarily opening Microsoft Edge. Dun, dun, dun. Next, click the button in the top right of the screen and you're in. To generate images, just ask Copilot to generate you an image of whatever your heart desires. It's that easy. The first and most obvious use for this is to create sprites. For example, say we want a futuristic coin sprite. We can ask Copilot to do that and it gives us four options. I strongly recommend telling it which one you like the best and saying what you want changed about it. I also found that putting stuff like 2D or video game sprite really helps. And 99% of the time, even if what Copilot generates is just what you wanted, you're still gonna have to do a bit of work in GIMP or Photoshop to remove the background. It doesn't matter how nice I ask, it never wants to give me a real transparent background. Sprites in video games all typically follow a similar style, say a thick outline or a simple color palette. With AI, however, things won't always look like they fit together. A better option, instead of just directly using the AI images, is to copy it with the style that you're interested in, or in some cases, if possible, directly tracing over it. This method is a bit more demanding than just removing a background, but it will give results that are much more cohesive with your other sprites. Dolly and Copilot are great for image generation, but there's an AI tool called Stable Diffusion that seems to be by far the best image generator yet. Currently, it seems to have a learning curve, steeper than y equals negative one over x minus one. And I feel like the majority of people are just gonna use something a bit easier, but definitely check it out if you're up for it. You can also use these AI images to help out with 3D modeling. If you saw my 3D modeling video, then you know I struggled the most when trying to model stuff from my brain. I tend to do a lot better when I have a physical reference or some reference images to go off of. That's where AI can really come in clutch. When I was trying to make an alien pistol, instead of doing what just looked cool and messing everything up, I could have asked Copilot to generate me an image and base the model off that. For people like me who are terrible at drawing and sketching out ideas, this is huge. If you're terrible at modeling too, don't worry, because there are AI tools that can even do that for you. The one I'm going to talk about now is 3D AI Studio. We're actually sponsoring this video. It's super easy to use. All you have to do is go to their website and type in your prompt and hit generate. And about 30 seconds later, you'll have what you asked for. Here, I'll show you. Let's make a tall Christmas tree with a golden star on top. It also helps to say things like realistic and high poly. After hitting generate, we get a really nice looking Christmas tree. 3D AI Studio also supports image to 3D as well. So instead of typing out what you want, you can show it a picture of what you want. Using their built-in image generator can also save some time. So I can generate an image of a Christmas tree and then use that image in their image to 3D generator. And just like that, we have another Christmas tree. Once you have a model that you like, you can click Refine, which will improve the texture quality. Then either download the GLB file or remesh it into a different file format, like FBX or OBJ. Now, I don't even know how I would go about making and texturing a Christmas tree in Blender, so 3D AI Studio really saved me a lot of work or money with this one. It's great for rapid prototyping too, so if you're making a 3D game, this is going to be by far the best AI tool for you. Make sure to click the link in the description and use code WILLHESS at checkout to get a 10% discount on a monthly plan or a one-time credit purchase. Music and sound effects are often the most neglected part of the game development process because most indies have no clue how to make good music and sound effects. This is another instance where AI can really help you out. The music AI tool I'm going to recommend is Udio. It's a text-to-music generator where you type in a prompt so, let's say a slow, chill beat for a video game level on a beach. Then, make sure you set it to instrumental so you don't get any lyrics, and hit create. It will take you a little while, but once it's done, it will give you two songs. Here's the first one. And here's the second one. Once you pick out which one you like better, you can add to it by clicking extend and then add intro, add section, or add outro. Here I'll click add outro and wait for it to generate. Again, it will give you two songs and you can download and use any of these songs anywhere. Udio does require you to have some sort of indication that the song was created with Udio. That just means putting a music generated with Udio somewhere in your description or in the credits of your game. Now, you're probably thinking, Will, this is great, but I don't have money coming out the wazoo, so how much is this gonna cost me? Nothing, kinda. 
Udio has a credit system where you get 10 free credits every day and 100 free credits every month. One credit corresponds to 30 seconds of music, so as long as you're not generating an unhealthily large amount of music, you'll never have to buy a paid plan or extra credits. Let's move on to sound effects. The tool I'm going to be using for sound effects is Eleven Labs. They have a really good text sound effect generator. Say we want a ding for picking up a coin. Just type in the prompt and click generate sound effects. And it makes four. Now let's see the results for writing with a pencil. Now let's try comedic item drop with a big crash. And finally, we'll try generating for a squeaky floor. As you can see, some of these sound effects are really, really good. You can download them and use them in your games at any point. Eleven Labs is also free, kinda. They have a character quota system, where the free plan gets you 10,000 characters a month. Each generation costs about 200 characters, so you get about 50 generations per month. This one I could definitely see people running out of, so you might need to consider a paid plan. Or maybe just use another email for another free account. Now to address the big question, should we even consider using AI in the first place? You probably already know my stance, based on the fact that I just made a YouTube video about AI, but I think AI is the future, in both game development and just in general. Now I don't want you to just blindly agree with me, because there are some pretty big concerns with this whole AI thing. The main arguments against AI generally fall into two categories, being afraid of AI and feeling superior to AI. Most people understand that AI destroying all humans because it thinks it's better than us is pretty far-fetched. But AI replacing your job because it can do what you can do for free, now that's a concern. In the realm of game dev, this means we won't need as many artists and programmers when working on a game. And that's a bad thing, right? Well, maybe not. If there was one thing I hope you took away from this video so far, it's that in game dev, AI is a tool to help you not replace you. So the artists and programmers who are no longer needed on one project could work on another project or make a studio on their own. This will lead to more games being released for less money, which will hopefully mean they're less expensive for gamers. I'm not an economist or anything like that, so take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. But generalizing this to the real world means that some people will lose their jobs to AI, but things overall will be cheaper because the labor costs will be significantly lower. Prices going down, what? Inflation problem solved. People also reject AI because they feel superior. I've been in this boat for a while. Like, why bother having ChatGPT code something when I can code it myself? Taking a step back and looking at the big picture, sure, I could spend 4 hours coding a maze generation algorithm, or I could do it in 15 minutes with the help of ChatGPT. If you think using AI like that is cheating, or if using AI makes your games inferior, well, the final product would not have changed at all. The only thing different was that I got 4 extra hours of sleep in that game jam. The biggest reason I'm pro AI in games and in general is because it's the future. Think of the internet, or electricity, or satellites, or literally any other monumental technological advancement. Now think of what the world would be like without just one of them. AI is another one of those technological stepping stones that will elevate the human race. That fact alone is enough for me to embrace AI. And whether you're for it or against it, you have the right to explain your side down in the comments. In the next video, I'm going to make a game showing off how to practically use all of these AI tools. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on so you don't miss out on that. If you're watching this in the future, you can watch that video right here. Don't forget to use the link in the description to get 10% off your 3D AI Studio purchase. And thanks again to 3D AI Studio for sponsoring this video. With all the powerful AI tools out there already, it's pretty clear that the future is closer than you think. So, are you going to be ready for it or afraid of it? Thanks for watching.